Welcome to the channel. So I wanna go over something on this motor real fast that I personally didn't know. I've said it a million times on this channel. They tell you that when you're creating YouTube content to make videos that you would want to watch. A lot of people struggle with, well, what do I record? No, it's not valuable, whatever. I cost myself thousands of dollars over this because I did not know this. So even though a lot of my viewers do know this, I wanna put this video out for anybody that finds my channel that may be younger, newer, inexperienced like I was, so that we can clear this very simple mistake up that I made that cost me thousands of dollars having to have this Coyote completely rebuilt. Whenever we first had this running on the dyno, I did not know it, but I actually starved this motor for oil pressure, for pretty much oil. Uh, I had this thing running at the shop, had it running at the house. Now this is a pro-charged Coyote, as a lot of my regular subscribers know. So it's extremely loud, it's open headers, and um, a race pro-charger, so it sounds like rocks in it, if you're familiar with you know, the straight cut gears in a pro-charger. So you can't hear anything. If the, if the motor has a failure, more than likely, you're probably not going to hear it unless you're a trained professional and you do it every single day for a living. You know, when this was on the dyno, uh, they were saying, you know, it sounds healthy or sounds off, stuff like that. And to me, it was just loud. <laughs> like, it was just loud. Um, so I want to show you what I messed up uh, because it was a very simple misunderstanding. And after I did this, if you do this yourself or you did not know this, then I don't want you to feel dumb because no matter what everybody says, I had a lot of people privately message me, talk to me, phone calls, text, comments under the video, everything saying that they also blew a motor up making the same mistake. So that's the reason why Kevin called it pretty fast. But unfortunately, when Kevin caught my mistake, uh, we had already ran it at the house and we had already did some idle in it, TKM, uh, before he caught it. It's not his job to catch it. Um, and he was just, you know, lucky enough to catch it. It was kind of already too late. I made the call to keep pushing because everything seemed healthy, uh, but I think the damage is already done. Um, so when you're hooking up a motor of any kind and you have a remote oil filter housing, okay? A normal motor has the filter housing that's on the side of the block that screws on, your normal screw on filter. So your oil filter, it looks just like this, your spin on regular oil filter. Now from everything I gathered, I'm not a genius, so don't take my word for it, but everything I gather, your oil goes in around the outside and then dirty oil comes in around the outside and it returns to the motor from the inside that goes back into the motor from everything I gathered. It could be the other way around, vice versa. What we do know about this filter without being extremely smart is that oil goes into this filter and oil flows out of this filter. So what happened with mine was I had the lines hooked up wrong. Basically which way this filter flows because it does only flow in one direction. Um, I had the lines look, hooked up incorrect. Now on the filter, adapter let me show you that and then let me show you the remote filter housing in case you're unfamiliar with all this all right we're going to start down here underneath my car so i have an adapter if you can see back there that copper colored piece that the lines are hooked into okay that is a oil filter um, housing adapter so that screws to the block and that allows me to pull oil lines off of that outside of the car this makes it so that there doesn't have to be a spin on oil filter here like there normally normally would be. Um, you could buy these for most any motor. Uh, this what this does is you know gets gets you some freed up space. We have lines that come off of it. Lines go right here. They're currently not hooked up to anything. And then what they're going to do is they're going to go to a remote oil filter housing that sits out somewhere. It's easier to get your filter to, and like I said, save space. So if you notice. On this oil filter housing, um, here it is, oil filter block adapter. You can see it says in and out. Now this has been welded on, but there's the part number and it says in and out on it. Okay, now on our remote oil filter housing, okay, it also says in and out. So one line hooks here, one line hooks here. That's the same as down there. So you'll have a line that comes out of the motor and goes into this and then out of this back into the motor. Now what we're doing to upgrade on this is we're also adding a clear view. So this one also says in and then on the bottom underneath it says out. Now this size says in over here, but it is plugged. Basically this manufacturer has allowed it so you can put, you can go in this side or in this side. The oil goes through the filter, then it goes down to the bottom of the filter and then it flows back out. So where I messed up on my first uh, 
running of this car was misunderstanding what the word in meant and what the word out meant. And you might think that that's simple and, you know, relatively easy because I did too, but actually a lot of people make this mistake. So coming over here to our whiteboard, we're going to explain this. We're going to first show what I did. So I had my spin on type of filter right here and I had my motor right here. Okay. I had an in and an out. I had an in and an out. Like this was all labeled. We did not have the clear view at the time of my blowing this up. So I thought this was pretty simple. So this would be your in line in my theory. This is the line that goes in, and this is the line that goes out. That's pretty simple, okay? That's exactly how everybody that I have talked to that has messed their motor up like this, this is exactly how they thought also. It was labeled simple. Of course it's right on this. You know, of course the motor, the adapter right here, of course they labeled it which one comes out of the motor and they come in the motor. We know that, but then the person that made the filter adapter they also went ahead and labeled theirs which one should be the in line off of your motor and which one should be the out line off of your motor. The problem is, is that this is wrong, okay? And that's where I mess up and messed up and didn't understand it. These two companies or these manufacturers across the board, every single one of them, they actually don't work together. Um, they actually don't think about the other one. They don't care about the other one. So this company right here, no matter what company you're using, no matter what motor, said that with our piece, this is the line that comes in the motor and this is the line that goes out of the motor. This company over here said that with our piece, this is your line that will come into the, the filter and this is your line that will come out to the filter. Now you're probably saying, oh, okay. So we're gonna flow out of the motor and into the filter. That makes sense, right? And then we're gonna go out of the filter and into the motor. That makes perfect sense. But when you don't understand or when you're new to this and you have never, never done this before, it also makes sense to you to say that this flows in the motor and this flows out of the motor and this company over here is just letting me know that, hey, your inline right here goes to this inline. This is your inline. This is your outline. Uh, there's plenty of products out in the world nowadays that are labeled like that, you know, that the companies do sit there and label, well, this is your, you know, just like electrical. This is your 12 volt, so this is red. It don't matter if you have a battery over here, your battery has red and black. And if you have a neon light over here, it has red and black. So these companies, you know, said that, well, this is your hot, and this is your negative, and you connect red to red, black to black. That's kind of what I did right here. I connected in to in, out to out. Um, that's how my brain worked, and that's all you have to, you know, realize, and that's how other people's works. Um, so what you would do on that one is you would, you know, out of your motor into your filter, out of your filter into your motor. Now for me, we're going to go clear view first so that it catches the bearing material. Now my engine builder, which is TKM Performance, Shout out to TK and Performance, they're absolutely amazing, um, has told me that if I'm going to run this clear view for my application, he also wants me to run a spin-on filter. Now, they do offer the clear view filter with this, that has the spin-on filter in the bottom of it, but this clear view filter right here that I bought was 600 new. I got it for 300 used. So that's the reason why I purchased the clear view that does not have a spin-on filter. I already own this. So we're adding this to the puzzle. So if you were buying, if you didn't have this or this, go ahead and just buy the one with the spin on. So you have everything all in one and all you're dealing with this and you don't have three stops. But for me, this channel is a budget channel. So we buy a bunch of used stuff and a bunch of stuff on deals. And so that's the reason why my setup is like it is. And you may also have picked up some pieces from your buddy and may need to do the same thing. So in my situation now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out of the motor into the clear view. We're gonna come out of the clear view into the filter, and we're gonna come out of the filter back into the motor. So we're always gonna be going out in, out in, out in, and that's gonna be your complete circle. Now, whenever I did this and I was flowing it, uh, the reason why I blew up my motor, let me clarify all this, is you might say, well, you should have had an oil pressure sensor, and it should have told you if you had oil pressure. Well, if you're new to the channel, I did. So my filter had, Let's draw another box, okay? You know, let's do PS, pressure sensor, okay? So it had an oil pressure, a oil pressure sensor on the 
um, adapter and I'll show you where that's located at on this. So adapter. right here you have a, a end piece that you can put a filter in. This is where I had my oil pressure sensor installed. This is where I was reading my oil pressure at. Now my Holly, I have a Holly uh, Pro Dash. So it's not like I have some junk. Um, it said oil pressure. So we have really good oil pressure. Basically from what I'm understanding without complicating this is that when I had mine hooked up in line in, out line out, okay, is that basically the oil was coming out of my motor and then it was hitting a dead end. You know, I guess if this is the way the filter is supposed to flow, then obviously we are flowing, let's see here, uh, we are flowing uh, backwards, okay? So it is basically two arrows are hitting each other together. The sensor's right here. So when this oil comes out, it was smacking the sensor, basically hitting the sensor, and the sensor's reading you have a ton of oil pressure coming out of the motor. And the motor did, was putting out oil pressure. The motor's oil pump was pumping out oil pressure. Problem was, is that it was trying to flow into here when this filter or this housing is from what I'm, without complicating it, from what I have been explained to me, is not designed to flow that way. So this sensor is sitting right here and it's reading this activity right here, but there's no oil going this way because it's stuck. It, it doesn't flow that way. It doesn't flow good or whatever the situation is, but all I can tell you is I promise you it does not flow that way. So it can't flow you know, in the wrong direction. All of these pieces are made to flow one way and one way only. So when you're setting up your stuff, you know, if you are in question, I would advise you to call the manufacturer before you toast a motor because this was a very, very costly, and the dollar signs keep on going. We haven't disclosed on the channel yet what I paid, um, but this is a very costly mistake for me because I have my motor professionally built and I don't do it myself. So hopefully that helps a new guy. Uh, that's what my channel is all about. If you just found it, my channel is about helping others. Um, and I want to put the videos out that the other guys don't put videos out about. A lot of times, unfortunately, a lot of people get up here and they think that everybody knows this and everybody knows this level because they are up here. So what it is, is these people of all types of channel, it could be about rebuilding tractors, okay, is they will teach you up here because that's where they at they're at, but they forget that people start down here and work their way up. And so sadly, it's very hard normally to find a channel that has this knowledge, but is teaching this level down here. And that's what I try to do with my channel is every single mistake I make, I don't try to hide anything. So I show all my paint flaws. I show every flaw I make because every flaw is a teaching point for somebody else out there who's watching your videos and who needs to know. There's no point in really having a channel. There's no point in saying you help others if you're not teaching the full spectrum necessarily. Now, you know, you could specialize, your channel could specialize in higher, you know, level of education and stuff. But I try to show the whole entire journey, not hide anything, try to respond to everybody's comments and try to help everybody out. So hopefully if you're new, you'll stick around because I'm gonna teach as much as I learn as I learn it. Um, and I'm gonna spread every bit of knowledge I can to help others because that's what I like to do. If you're new, go ahead and subscribe, smash that bell button so you can get notifications because we do a lot of cool stuff and um, I'll catch y'all on the next update. Thanks y'all.